Hey there, this is Seth Schaefer from Team Just Cause Robotics, and in today's video, I'll be covering the changes that I made to Division for a version 2.10 remake that competed at May's Norwalk Havoc event just a few days ago. So the major change that I made to Division this time around was an experimental change to try and utilize hinged forks, such as this one, to counter drums and beater bars and other smaller diameter vertical spinners. Um, so this is a quarter inch thick AR500 fork, same exact thickness and material as the weapons that Division has that it spins, and it is obviously pretty beefy for what it is. Um, I also have an alternate version of these, which is substantially longer, one inch longer in fact. So you can see size comparison there. And then I added also some stabilizing forks on the sides of the bot, which I also made in two variants. So these were the longer ones, which I ran on the robot. I also never ran these on the robot in the competition. Both of the fights that I had where I used this configuration, I used the shorter ones and these longer side forks. But I also had a alternate shorter side fork design as well that's about half inch shorter. So basically these are designed to be fixed, not hinged, and they prevent the bot from tipping forward when it spins up, just like the titanium forks do on the horizontal configuration. These are made out of 10th inch thick AR500 steel um, instead of quarter inch thick, but otherwise they are, you know, same material and kind of pointy, but with slightly rounded tips, so they don't dig into the floor as easily. Um, these guys also, you can see there is a bit of a relief at the tip that is very intentional to try and prevent it from riding flat to the floor the whole time. And then if any little bump gets under it, then its tip is no longer on the floor. I have just about, you know, a quarter inch or so of this flat that will hopefully be on the floor to keep the tip a little bit stronger. And then otherwise it's a pretty shallow slope right up to here. And this little nub has a radius that is specifically chosen as a radius only a little bit bigger than the tooth radius of the Fingertech beater bars so that they basically end up scraping this and don't actually really bite into it at all because they'll have an almost zero degree angle of attack on this surface, ideally. Um, so the idea was to basically get a beater right up to here and then have it start to jam up and slow down a little bit. And then as soon as they go beyond that by a little bit, my weapon can uppercut them instead of having them uppercut me. So paired alongside the forks is this. I'll show with a short fork for reference. So there's actually a little shoulder bolt that'll go in right here and tighten up against this 1024 nut. These are actually the same exact shoulder bolts I'm using for the linkage arms on my new robot shrapnel mine, card above to videos about that. Uh, but basically, um, the idea is that this hinge is here, this hinge is here. When the pin's actually in, it shouldn't be able to go back too far because eventually this flat sticking out the back will bottom out. So it should only be able to angle up to about here and then not go back any further than that. And it's able to angle down uh, about yay far, which is quite a bit below the base plate of Division so that even when it's gyroing while turning, these forks can scrape the floor and prevent another bot from easily getting under me just every time I'm turning around. Um, so this whole wedge is made out of Cheetah TPU, 3D printed TPU filament, which I got off Amazon for about 55 bucks a kilogram. I will include a link in the description, which will be an Amazon affiliate link where you can buy it. And this stuff is great because it's stupidly flexible and therefore it can take impacts and hits really well. So even with this fork here, this can bend significantly without coming apart and it will continue to just go back to its original shape more or less and remain strong. So I had a couple issues with these though, because TPU doesn't like to print very cleanly. 
At the time I printed these, I had retraction turned off because I thought you needed that. But Cheetah TPU is designed to be printed more similarly to like an ABS or PLA than most TPUs are. It's a short 95A hardness, which means it's pretty hard as TPUs go while still being pretty flexible, which makes it easier to print uh, because it's easier for the printer's extruder to actually push it. Um, but you still get this nice squishy result, which is pretty nice. Um, the only problem with it is that it doesn't take threads very well, which is why my robot didn't do so well in its first fight. But I'll leave that more for the event recap video that I will be releasing in a week or two. Because this TPU seemed like it was a really durable option for the anti-vertical configuration, I actually decided I'd use a little bit of the extra weight that I have in the anti-horizontal configuration where I had almost three full ounces of spare weight to do the same thing to the wedge pieces that mount the uh, wedges for the backing pieces that mount the wedges. So these are 100% identical to the pieces that were on Division before, except that instead of being printed in Alloy 910 nylon, they're printed in this cheaper uh, TPU material. So unlike this part, which is printed with three walls and it's pretty squishy and low infill, these are printed with six walls. So they're not like squishy per se. And also the geometry back here makes it a bit more rigid, but it still is a lot less rigid than the Alloy 910 and therefore a lot less brittle and less likely to crack, which was the main way that I was seeing the the Alloy 910 fail, it would kind of crack and break apart almost like glass, though it would take a significant impact before doing so. Um, so like this is an example of one of my rear armor mounts for division that's printed in the Alloy 910, um, just for a quick uh, material look comparison, I guess. This is in a clear natural colored Alloy 910 filament, whereas most of the parts I have on Division number one are printed in black, but it's otherwise the same material. Um, this is an example of an unrelated part printed in the black Alloy 910, but again, same material as this guy. Um, and this is a little flexible only because it's pretty thin, but if this was TPU, I could probably twist this like, uh, like a 360 degree spiral without it breaking. With this guy, with the Alloy 910, I, I can't get it past even like 45 degrees. So it's a much, much, much more rigid filament. Um, it's still pretty flexible compared to like a PLA or PETG though, which is why it works well to take impacts to a point. But this stuff takes impacts to an almost unbelievable degree before it will ever fail because it doesn't ever crack. It's not brittle enough to crack. It will have to literally just like rip apart or peel apart in order for it to fail. Almost forgot one more change I made was to the wheel hubs. So this is the new and this is an old wheel hub. Uh, both of these are 3D printed. This one is 3D printed in a carbon fiber nylon material, which is quite a bit more expensive than this uh, Cheetah TPU, but it definitely works. It's very lightweight, but the problem with this stuff is it's even more rigid and brittle than the Alloy 910. Um, I found out the hard way when I was fighting alongside Mini Mulcher at the February event, that one hit on this could crack it straight through and break this T-shaped uh, flared out bit off, which kind of holds the wheel on even without the uh, washer intact. This is what the, the little custom washer looks like. Here's another example of a hub that I printed in the, the clear or natural uh, Alloy 910. So you can see here, the way this is supposed to work is the washer kind of goes on like so. You squeeze the foam wheel by shoving it down like this. And then with a little turning tool that grabs into these two little knobs here, you rotate it 90 degrees and then allow the foam to spring it outwards. So those uh, triangle shaped flags kind of sit into the recesses in the washer. And now the washer turns with the hub and the wheel is kind of squished hard enough that it has these little grooves and the hub dig into it and turns with the hub as well. So I tried to improve that with this design where I added these little 
thin bits that stick out. Um, that turned out to be a mistake because it kind of opened up the bore of the foam wheel more than I had hoped to the point where it could actually slide off of the bits that stick out at the front. So unfortunately made it possible so that with the washer broken, the wheel wasn't really retained any longer. I was hoping to just get better torque transfer without the washer if the washer were to break, but instead I made it possible for the tire to come off if the washer were to break. So this turned out to be a pretty bad uh, trade-off, <laughs> but the hubs themselves were able to take hit direct hits and stay in one piece, unlike the more brittle carbon fiber nylon ones. So I think that just making these out of the, with the old design, or maybe as some other modification that doesn't involve doing this, um, it'll probably be way better still than the uh, carbon fiber nylon ones. Just another quick demo here with the orange TPU hub. You can see this goes on, turn it, pushes out, and the little ears kind of lock in there. Though with the TPU, they're pretty flexible, so it can kind of push out a bit, which may be one of the reasons that it seemed like the washers could come off a little too easily, or the wheels could come off a little too easy, easily, so that these little ears were kind of bendy. So that's another thing I'll have to revise if I do another round of TPU hubs. Unfortunately, my preparations for this particular event were sort of rushed as I was working on shrapnel mine for like two months prior to this and I only spent four days getting division ready, but I still was able to put on some entertaining fights as always, and I look forward to coming back better than ever in the future. That's all I have for you today. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to click like. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe. And especially subscribe if you want to watch my upcoming event recap from the May event that I just referenced.